you came from all over the Commonwealth. From all walks of life. All ages. All backgrounds. You came seeking a better life. For you. For your family. You came to prove that dreams can come true. Destinies can be fulfilled. You are the class of 2021, the guardians of our community and the embodiment of Quinsigaman Community College. You are Wyverns. You are in every industry, every profession, making a difference in the lives of so many. You are out in the forefront of our community, making our world a better place. There's a power that comes from pushing beyond your comfort zone, a courage that comes from getting back up when you get knocked down, a fortitude that transcends fear and uncertainty. It's the strength of Wyvern Nation. You mastered remote instruction. You stayed engaged with your classmates. You cared for your family. You watched over your neighbors. And you continued working to keep our community safe and thriving. You dreamed of this day, this moment in time, where you would show the world that the dedication and sacrifice was worth it. You focused your heart and mind together to take you to a place some said you could never go and you proved the doubters wrong. You were unstoppable. Today there are no limits, no barriers, only a path forward to a future bright with promise, a future where you will shine, a future of limitless possibilities. You did it. Join us as we celebrate you. The Quinsigamond Community College Class of 2021. Welcome to Commencement. Good afternoon and welcome to the Class of 2021. I never imagined that while planning last year's virtual commencement ceremony, that we would once again be holding a virtual commencement ceremony this year. But as we all have come to learn to adapt and adjust for the health and safety of everyone, and in light of the fact that we cannot hold large gatherings or be on the arena floor of the DCU Center, here we are once again. But whether in person or virtually, graduation is about your accomplishments. And today, we are here to celebrate you. To celebrate all that you have accomplished especially during these challenging and unprecedented times. In spite of it all, you did it. You are the QCC class of 2021, who we will forever remember as a class that not only completed their degree remotely, but for the past year persevered in spite of not having an opportunity to meet many of your professors in person or shake their hands or even gather in the library with fellow students for late night study hours. And in spite of the many challenges you faced, you made it. We are so proud of you and are excited to celebrate you today. Welcome, honored guests, esteemed colleagues, dedicated faculty and staff, cherished family members and friends, and most especially you, our graduates, the class of 2021. Please join me as we enjoy a wonderful rendition of our national anthem sung by QCC student, Elisa Durham. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets reckless the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the Thank you for that wonderful performance of our national anthem. At this time, please join me in a moment of silence in recognition of the many who we have lost during this past year and who are not able to be present to celebrate with us in this wonderful occasion. We have lost friends, family members, colleagues, teachers, and students. Let us forever keep them in our memories. Let's they be forgotten. Would you join me in a moment of silence? Thank you. As we kick off today's ceremony, I would like to acknowledge and thank our Board of Trustees, our Foundation Board member, and the College's executive team for their leadership and guidance. They were there supporting each and every one of us throughout this uh, difficult year. Thank you to our faculty greeter, Eduardo Rivas, and student government president, Armela Chindole, who will be presenting greetings to you today. Thank you to our wonderful faculty and staff who have been there for you as your teachers, advisors, mentors, and supporters. Their hard work saw you through. We all came together to ensure your success and that you completed your degree in this challenging world of remote teaching and learning. Graduates, today enjoy the celebration, the pride and the smiles in the faces of your friends and your family, and that feeling of accomplishment that you feel. You've earned it, but don't stop here. Don't stop climbing, don't stop learning, and don't stop striving for a better future. I never cease to be amazed by our students, your strength, determination, and perseverance. Be proud of your accomplishment. Many of you juggle work, family responsibilities, while continuing to pursue your dream of a college education. You are veterans, single parents, working adults, or the first in your family to attend college. And if all of these challenges weren't enough, you completed your degree during a pandemic. And some of the most turbulent times we face as a nation, some of the most difficult times in human history. Each and every one of you is living history, and more importantly, you are making history. In everything that you do, you are changing our world. Whenever you experience hardships in life, and the specter of doubt gives you pause, and you begin to doubt yourself whether you can carry on, remember this day and draw strengths from this moment. Know that you can carry on. Know that there is nothing that you cannot accomplish. Know that in the worst of time, you've proven yourselves and succeeded. Draw strengths from that. 
there's still much to be done to recover from this pandemic, to heal this fractured world, and dismantle the systemic injustices and racism that continue to plague us. There is much to be done to bridge the economic gaps that exist, as well as the gaps between people. There is still much more history to be made, but I am confident that you will make it. I have hope and I have faith in you. You are our future and the future is bright because you are in it. Stay strong. Carry on. That is my charge to you. Now, I am very pleased to introduce our Massachusetts Commissioner of Higher Education, Carlos Santiago. Commissioner Santiago joins us from Boston with greetings from the Board of Higher Education. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. It's an honor for me to be with you today and to bring you greetings on behalf of Governor Charlie Baker, Secretary of Education James Pizer, and the Massachusetts Board of Higher Education. Graduates, we are here to celebrate your academic success, and I want to underscore what this means for you, and yes, what this means for our state, for your children, and for your children's children. I want to reflect on two things from the past year, the importance of individual resiliency and the need for continued collective action on racial justice. First, let's reflect a bit on what we have learned in this very challenging year. I don't think things will be the same moving forward. The new normal would not look like life a year ago. Each of one, each one of you is in a sense a pioneer. While you were learning, we were learning from you in ways that will shape the college experience of the future. Teaching and learning will never be the same. Your campus did an exceptional job of pivoting from face-to-face -face learning to remote instruction, but it wasn't easy. Many of you were sent home to begin studying and working remotely, and yet teaching and learning continued albeit very differently from before. As the pandemic spread, the economy took a serious turn for the worse. People lost jobs, perhaps you lost yours, or your hours were cut, maybe you worried how you would pay for school. We began to see rising homelessness and hunger in both the general population and certainly among students. Some of you have lost people you loved. We saw that black and brown students were disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Many did not return to school last fall because they had to prioritize family income and family health needs first. We'd better hope they come back because students of color remain the only group that is growing in Massachusetts. And in an economy like ours, we need college educated students to fill the jobs needed to keep the state moving forward. This is why I'm grateful to each and every one of you for earning your degrees. No matter what your major is, your skills and talents will help Massachusetts rebuild its economy and move past this pandemic. But it's going to take some time. And that means the transition from college to the so-called real world could be slower for the class of 21. I want to reassure you about this. I have no doubt that you will land on your feet. Here's why I believe this. More than any other class of college graduates in recent memory, you have demonstrated how resilient you are. Resilience is a combination of factors. It involves a positive attitude, even in the face of adversity. Mental toughness and the ability to seek help from others rather than to go it alone. There's a substantial body of scientific research that shows resilience matters more when it comes to success than innate intelligence. Resilience is something that individuals can develop within themselves. None of us were born resilient. COVID-19, as terrible as it has been, has given each of us a chance to become a more resilient person. We've overcome obstacles we didn't know existed. Even though I don't know you personally, I know how resilient you are because I know what it took for you to overcome the challenges of this last year in order to earn your degree. Now that same set of skills will help you in writing your next chapter. Some of you will go for a job interview and perhaps not get the offer you'd hoped for immediately. You may have moments where you wonder, what am I doing wrong? This is where resiliency kicks in. 
You look back on this day, your commencement day, and you remember the times when you thought you'd never graduate. You remind yourself that you in fact did. You graduated from college despite a global pandemic. And with that reality check, you will know that you can indeed succeed in landing that first job, even if it takes a bit of time. But graduating from college isn't just about getting a job. You've also learned what it means to be an engaged citizen. Many of you voted in your first election last year. You watched or took part in protests demanding racial justice. And that's where I want to pause and reflect on for a moment. This wasn't only the year of COVID-19. Was, this was also the year when Americans of all backgrounds and colors stood up and said, enough is enough to racist attacks on African-Americans, Asian-Americans, and other minoritized populations. We saw people who had never taken part in a demonstration before head to the streets, angry and demanding change. The death of George Floyd touched a nerve in all of us. And for those of us in higher education, it was a reminder that we too have work to do to improve racial equity on our college campuses. I want you to know that we are taking this work seriously. With support from a national foundation and additional funding from Massachusetts taxpayers, we are working to achieve greater equity and racial justice at every public college and university in the Commonwealth. For too long, higher education has focused on whether students are ready for college. Now, rather than looking at whether certain groups of students measure up to our expectations, we're focused on changes we need to make to better support you. First and foremost, we need to identify and repair the policies and practices that have not equitably served all students in realizing their dreams of a college degree. As you leave us, I want you to know that racial equity is our highest priority. We're committed to making sure that all students, regardless of the color of their skin or the zip code in which they live, have an equal opportunity to do what you are doing today, graduate from college. I hope that as graduates of our system, you will watch what we do, not just what we say. Your demonstration of resiliency and our commitment to racial equity, these are two of the most essential ingredients needed for high achievement in higher education and in the life that follows it. I hope that you stay resilient and stay active as informed, engaged citizens who demand a better world for all of us. I wish you the very best as you celebrate your graduation day and extend my appreciation to all the faculty, staff, family, and friends who supported you in your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Santiago, and we are honored and humble that you were able to share your message with us today. It is now my honor to introduce someone who was chosen by our faculty to deliver a special message. Representing the faculty, a wonderful group of individuals who have had an important influence in your life, is Assistant Professor of Accounting, Eduardo Rivas. Good afternoon. My name is Eduardo Rivas. I am a professor of accounting at Quinciamo Community College. I want to extend a very warm welcome to family and friends of our graduates, colleagues, honored guests, members of the platform, President Pedraja, and most importantly, welcome and congratulations to Quinciamo Community College class of 2021. It is my very deep honor to stand here before you today and represent Quinciamo Community College faculty and staff. Today, we are gathered here to celebrate your success. The big question for many of you now is, what we are going to do next? Follow your dreams and never give up. This was a different year. There were many obstacles on your way. There were plans that didn't work, but your hard work and dedication made the difference. Let me tell you, life is not easy, but there is only one life. You cannot change the past, but you can always work hard for a better future. The success we are celebrating today is the result of your hard work and perseverance. On behalf of the Quincy Amo Community College, I want to say, Congratulations. It has been an honor 
to have shared this part of your life journey. Enjoy today's ceremony and know that the faculty at QCC are very proud of each of you. Thank you, Eduardo, for your wonderful message to our graduates. I know how hard it is for the faculty to not be present to honor and celebrate all of you in person. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce you to QCC's Board of Trustee Chairperson, Ms. Susan Mailman. Chair Mailman has been a valuable leader of our board since 2015 and is a member of the QCC Foundation Board. Chair Mailman is the owner of Coughlin Electrical Contractors, Inc. and Coughlin Network Services, Inc. in Worcester, Massachusetts. Sue has been a strong advocate for public education and fair funding at the state level for cities like Worcester. Welcome, Chair Mailman. It is a pleasure for me to be here today to help celebrate the QCC graduating class of 2021. As chair of the Board of Trustees for the past five years, I think a lot about the legacy of Community College. I'm hopeful that each of you will remember with pride and enthusiasm that you are a Community College graduate. I hope you will engage with our Alumni Association. We need advocates and champions, and we need next generation leaders. The college has established a tradition of honoring worthy retired and retiring professors with the title of Professor Emeritus. To receive this honor, one must have served for 15 years or more as a full-time member of the Quinsigamon faculty and be deemed worthy of being acknowledged for excellence in teaching and for personifying the mission of the college and the community. Although we are not able to honor this year's recipients in person, we feel it's very important to still recognize them here today. It is the college's hope that we will be inviting each recipient back to campus once we're permitted to hold large gatherings, where they will be celebrated and honored in front of their colleagues. This year, we bestow this honor on six professors, three from the uh, Department of Mathematics. Raphael Vicente, professor of mathematics, Carol Rinaldi, Professor of Mathematics, uh, Andriana Grimaldo, Professor of Mathematics, Roger Miservi, Professor of Biology, Charlene Mara, Professor of Early Childhood Education, and Cheryl Finn, Assistant Professor of Emergency Medical Services and Paramedics. The emeritus recognition indicates how highly respected these faculty and administrators are by their students and colleagues, and I offer them my very best wishes for happiness and health as they enter into retirement or their next adventure. Their impact on this college and in the Worcester community will long be remembered. Congratulations and thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Armela Sindoli who brings greeting from today's graduation class. Armela is the 2020-2021 Student Government Association President, who has worked with our other student leaders to ensure that our students remain engaged during the pandemic. And she has kept the SGA running remotely during these challenging times. I'm very proud to introduce this year's student greeter, Armela Chindoli. Thank you, President Pedraha. Class of 2021, please allow me to be one of many to congratulate you over all the incredible academic achievements. You are a trailblazer, a champion, a researcher, willing to contribute your learned expertise to evolve and enrich the environment in which we live. The environment we thought would embrace graduates with open arms has shifted in ways we never expected or planned. The pandemic impacted our lives in many ways including the abrupt shift to virtual classrooms, and has produced a new reality that we had to adapt, and we did. It is appropriate to reflect on this global situation while recognizing your stamina, your wisdom, and your grit. You met all of the college's academic standards while quickly learning the broader life lessons that nothing is guaranteed and what William Dean Howell described as tomorrow's confusion. Your eventual transition would include practical knowledge outside of face-to-face -face and simulated classroom teaching. College in general is difficult, and the pandemic only made it more so. I personally faced many challenges and self-doubt that I had to overcome to achieve my dream of a college degree. 
If your experience resembles my story and you encounter difficulty in completing your program, you are not alone. This message was created with concepts and actions that I use to cultivate consistency and concentration to achieve all of my objectives. To frame our future, we must embrace collaboration and recognize the family and friends who helped us on this path with a minute of reflection as we focus on their commitment to our progress. We must continue to build a chain of power around us with constructive energies and be surrounded with innovators. We must continue connecting and reconnecting with opinion leaders who provide support and advice. We must inspire others. Improving your outlook requires thinking positively to make sure your internal voice is an inspiring mentor and not a pessimistic critic who is hampering your ambitions. Keep feeding your mind with the knowledge that liberates and nurtures your soul and development. Learning should be a constant operation and learning is the fundamental prerequisite for progress in any area. After college, education should not stop. Take part in a career that helps to develop your personality and skills. Throughout your studies, you have demonstrated your exceptional abilities and I salute you. All of your training, learning, reading, testing, presenting, publishing, and overall commitment paid off. You have earned the right to be yourself. Do not feel pressure to be what society wants you to be. Be your authentic self. Do what makes you happy and makes you feel fulfilled. Remember, you can achieve everything you want in life with hard work and perseverance. Life is constantly changing and you must continue to evolve to become a better version of you because you are invincible and you will win. Congratulations on this day. I am eager to see how you build and mold a better future for us all. Thank you. Thank you, Armella, for those inspiring words to your fellow graduates. We wish you the best of luck as you continue your education. Graduates, as you graduate today, you will become the newest members of the QCC Alumni Association and part of a network of more than 34,000 Quinsigamon alumni. The Alumni Association graciously welcomes you and reminds you that QCC is far greater than textbooks and classrooms. It is the foundation of your future, a successful future for which this wonderful institution has prepared you. In this great nation of ours, opportunities are endless, and each of you will make a difference. Every day, our graduates make our community stronger by their contributions. The Alumni Association is made up of all graduates of Quinn Sigamon Community College. They engage in fundraisers to provide scholarships for needy students and hold events that provide opportunities to socialize and network with fellow graduates. Class of 2021, today you will swell the ranks of QCC alums by nearly 1,400. We hope you take pride in your new stature and we encourage you to keep in touch. Our mascot, the Wyburn, is a mythical guardian of the community and you, our graduates, will go on to be the guardians of our community and of our world. Today, more than ever, our world needs more wyverns. Go and change the world. Go wyverns. Each year, we invite a guest speaker to address our graduating class. And as much as we want today's speaker to be with us in person to celebrate your accomplishments, she was gracious enough to record her special message for you. Dr. Maya Rockymore Cummings leads Global Policy Solutions, a Washington, D.C. firm that makes policy work for people and their environments. Maya's areas of expertise include health, social insurance, income security, education, women's issues, and youth civic participation. She is the author of the Political Action Handbook, a how-to guide for the hip-hop generation, and co-editor of Strengthening Community, Social Insurance in a Diverse America, among many other articles and chapters. 
The recipient of many honors, she was named an Aspen Institute Henry Crown Fellow in 2004 and is the recipient of Running Start 2007 Young Women to Watch Award. A regular guest on radio and television shows, Maya has appeared on NPR, CNN, Black Entertainment Television, ABC World News Tonight, Fox News, Al Jazeera, and C-SPAN. Her opinions have also been quoted by the New York Times, Washington Post, USA Today, LA Times, Boston Globe, Black America Web, and Houston Chronicle, among other prominent national news sources. It is with great pleasure I present to you Dr. Maya Rockymore Cummings. You are enough. You're more than special, better than tough. You are enough. When life conspires to weigh you down, you find your way through. And when bills pile up until you think you might drown, well, you figure that one out too. You do what it takes to plan your life, striving to accomplish goals for family and career. You become a leader who works to minimize strife because you know community and country are dear. Quinn Sigamon has given you tools, resources, and a platform to learn. Whatever comes next, you can be sure that you are prepared. You have what it takes to further your education or go out and earn so that your knowledge, compassion, and insight can be shared. Quinn Sigamon graduates, now is the time to write your next chapter, charter your ship, and take on the world. Bring your skills, integrity, and cherish memories on this grand climb and watch the glory of your life become unfurled. And never forget, you are enough. You are more than special, better than tough. You are enough. I want to say congratulations and thank you uh, to the board of Quinn Sigamon Community College. I want to thank the president, Dr. Luis Pedraja, and his leadership team for inviting me. I want to thank the faculty and staff, the entire QCC team. At the drop of a dime, you pivoted during a global pandemic to make sure that the quality of the education you provided to the students did not suffer. Congratulations and thank you. I also want to congratulate and thank the 2021 graduates of QCC. I want you to know that I appreciate you and acknowledge your hard work. Some of you went to school, had a family, uh, were going to you know, a job, maybe have a job or two, all at the same time. And that is simply amazing. And what's even more amazing is that you did it in the midst of a global pandemic which means that you are enough. <laughs> you're more than special, you're better than tough. You are enough. You know how to persevere in life. There is a word for this toughness and it's called resilience and you've got it. And you should know that you can draw on that resilience for the rest of your life because there are going to be challenges ahead. Now the obstacles ahead of you might be familial, they might be financial, they might be professional. There will be obstacles. One obstacle I wanna talk about today is bias. Uh, frankly, we don't talk about it enough. Now, we tend to talk about bias when it comes to racial bias or gender bias or religious bias. We know that people hold stereotypes about certain people based on categories. They just assume that they know who the person is uh, and they make those assumptions, not based on full knowledge of the person, but based on a stereotype or a category. Well, this actually happens in the academic field. It's called credential bias. And there are some people who believe that they can assume things about your character, about your intelligence, about your ability to learn, just basically, on, basically based on your degree or where you went to school. Now, let me tell you a little story. I once was on a trip. Uh, with a bunch of adults, um, very high profile, well-known adults. And one of them sat across from me on the bus. Uh, he was an elected official who basically was an attorney general for a major state. 
Uh, and he was talking about all the resumes that they got in their office and how they couldn't possibly manage them all. And so he had his staff create two boxes, a box for the Ivy League schools and a box for everyone else. And as the resumes came in, came in he had a staff put them in the Ivy League box or the everyone else box. And when it came time to interview, they only interviewed uh, out of the Ivy League box. Uh, and then the everyone else box never got considered. Now that is bias. And I couldn't believe he was telling me this because he was speaking to a graduate of public schools. I went to a historically black college uh, for undergrad. Uh, I got my master's and PhD from a public university. Uh, and he was basically telling me he wouldn't hire me. He wouldn't hire my late husband. Uh, he wouldn't even hire most of the people I know. And that is the narrow-minded thinking that some people have. And you might run into those kinds of people in your life. But I want you to know that they will not determine your success. You determine your success. And you will be successful in spite of those kinds of people. Why? because Quinsigamon Community College has prepared you. Now, you, this is a wonderful university, a wonderful college that has more than 120 degrees, uh, more than 120 degree and certificate programs. Uh, you have the Quest Center uh, with high-tech labs and classrooms. Uh, you've got the Healthcare and Workforce Development Center preparing many frontline workers throughout the region. You've even got a supportive and caring environment that has supported you throughout your stay at Quinn Sigamon Community College. So in the midst of a global pandemic, there was a food bank available to you if you and your family members were hungry. There was an award-winning mentorship program available to you so that you could have access to people who have been there and done that, who can give you the lay of the land and give you critical advice so that you don't have to you know, reinvent the wheel. Uh, you even have a university president who recently announced that he is freezing tuition. Now that's incredible. It's going to be important for the students that come after you. And that means that you have a very supportive environment. And that is great. I want you to know that because of Quinn Sigamon, you can achieve whatever you can envision. And just think about it. Uh, I often have young people, uh, often, uh, who are looking for career advice. And if they don't already have their goals in mind and they're asking me about them, I, I, I tell them to do one exercise. I tell them to close their eyes and think about where they see themselves in 20 years. What kind of house are you living in? Or is it a house? Is it an apartment? You know, is there a driveway? What's in the driveway? What kind of clothes are you wearing? Is there a family in that house or apartment? Uh, do you have a partner? What kind of job do you have? What kinds of things on that job make you happy? Is it even a job? Is it a business that you built? What kinds of aspects of your business make you satisfied? What are you doing in your spare time? What, is your, what are your hobbies? What makes you fulfilled from those hobbies? Think about all of these things and then pick two or three things from that vision to hang your hat on. Things that you know you want to achieve and then you plot your steps towards that vision. Direct your path to coincide and to take you toward that vision. That is one way to think about planning. I want you to be intentional about your career, be intentional about your family, and be intentional about community. Now people often don't think about community, but you are a part of a community, uh, a nation, and a world. And you have so many gifts to give. You have to be a committed and active participant, whether that's through you know, service, speaking out, uh, voting, uh, participating in all aspects of your local community, making sure that you're giving back uh, even as you receive. Because we know that your active participation will make a positive difference in the lives of others. It will make the places where you live even better. And certainly, it will make our nation even greater. Uh, and so with that, you know, all of these things are important for your full development. And I want to make sure that you carry these traits with you. Self-care is going to be very important. Now, there are times when life can feel like a race, uh, but it's more like a journey. 
And so it's important that you pace yourself and that you take care of your body, protect your heart and mind, and certainly feed your soul. And when I say take care of your body, feed it the right things, hydrate it, make sure that you're getting that physical activity and you certainly the rest that you need. Uh, make sure that you are doing everything you can to take care of this body so that it can take you through the journey of your life. Uh, and certainly make sure that you're feeding your soul. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean, you know, going to church or mosque or synagogue. I mean, you know, taking care of your soul, whatever feeds your soul, whether that is, you know, nature, you know, going and appreciating the beauty in nature, maybe through hiking, uh, whether it's listening to music, maybe you're a classical music buff, uh, maybe it's painting, you enjoy art, and that you get a lot out of that. These are things that feed your soul. Make sure you're doing all of the things that make you a well-rounded person. Because I mentioned resilience earlier, it's much easier to be resilient if you don't burn yourself out. And by taking care of yourself, you can go the distance without burning out. Make sure you're a person of integrity. Honor your commitments. Do what you say you're going to do. Do the right thing, even when it's tough. I guarantee you that you will be the person that will be remembered over everyone else because people will remember your integrity if you can maintain it and demonstrate it consistently over your working life. Uh, make sure that you are doing all of the things uh, that make you memorable and integrity is one of those things. Make sure you're uplifting others. It's not always about competition. Sometimes you can be an ally. You know, if somebody achieves something, don't be resentful or jealous. Congratulate them. Congratulate them and cheer them on. And they'll be there to cheer you on when you get your, your acknowledgments. Uh, make sure that you're giving back. I talked about service. It's very important. Service is the price that you pay for freedom in this country. Do not despise small beginnings. Uh, you know, do the small things well so that you can do the big things even better. I think back on the jobs that I had at the start of my career, and I'm not talking about, you know, my career career. I'm talking about my jobs in high school. My first job, I was what they called a courtesy clerk. Basically, I was a bagger in a local grocery store. Uh, then I graduated to become a cashier. And then I left the grocery store to become an even better cashier over at Chick-fil-A. Uh, where I also served chicken sandwiches. Uh, and then I went on to become a peer counselor and my undergrad and a bank intern during the summer. And all of these jobs imparted terrific lessons, lessons that I carried with me and built upon at every single job since. These are the building blocks of your success. Do not despise small beginnings because they make you who you are. There are a lot of famous community college graduates uh, that, you know, show uh, that if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. Uh, Tom Hanks, world-renowned actor. Uh, we know, you might know him as Forrest Gump, community college. Uh, what about, uh, get this, Steve Jobs. Every time you look at your Apple Watch, every time that you use your Apple computer, know that a community college uh, student actually did that. Uh, there is a woman named Eileen, what is her name? Eileen, 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 Eileen Collins. She was the first woman pilot and then became a commander of a U.S. space shuttle. So she piloted and commanded a U.S. space shuttle. Community college graduate. I want you to know that you can do it. You are enough. You are more than special. You are better than tough. You are enough. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. Remember, graduates of 2021, that you are enough. And remember that Quinn Sigamon Community College produces productive professionals. So you go out and you get your future. It's ready for you and you are ready for it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rocky Moore, for your inspiring and motivating message. We're honored to have you be a part of this special day for our graduates. At this time, I invite you to switch over to the link for your specific school where the ceremony will continue with the reading of our candidates for certificates and degrees and the final portion of today's 
ceremony.